Hello everyone and welcome to a short presentation on using open source software as components in commercial products. My name is Dirk Riele. I'm a professor of computer science at University of Erlangen. I specialize in software engineering and open source software. So open source software is just software given to you under an open source license. Uh, by definition, open source software licenses um, give you certain rights. That's the fun part. You get the right to freely use the software, right to receive the source code, modify it, uh, pass it on, pass it on in modified form. This rights grant is common across all open source licenses. It's pretty much always the same, whatever the specific license text. What varies between open source licenses are the obligations. So in addition to rights you get, you also have to fulfill obligations to get those rights. These obligations can be simple attribution. You say what components you're using and whose copyright it is and so forth. In addition, you're usually not allowed to use any trademarks that somehow feel or seem associated with the license or the open source. Now, using open source has lots of benefits. You get high quality software almost for free. I say almost because it takes effort, as we see, to use it correctly. There's no vendor lock-in, which means uh, you will not have to worry about cost or price increases. Uh, if the vendor goes out of business, the software is still there and not in escrow. Uh, you have the ability to help yourself using the source code at any point of time. When you look at the licenses now for using open source correctly, you will quickly realize there are two categories of use cases. Uh, there's the in-house use, where you just use the software in your own business. That could be using LibreOffice for word processing or GCC, the compiler, for compiling code. Next to in-house use, there's the distribution, which is taking open source as components, putting it into a product and then selling on that product to a third party. Distribution here means you distribute the open source code further, even though as it is a part of your package. The key issue is that in-house use has almost no obligations, while the distribution use case has all of the obligations, and as we will see, they will be cumbersome. These two categories are the two course categories defined in the licenses. You may find more use cases in-house for yourself, but they really will just be variants of these two fundamentally different situations. So here's the basic plot. Uh, there's an open source programmer uh, who writes some code, makes it available on an open source license and puts it on the web. That's the original distribution. Then you, the vendor who's interested in putting open source as components in its products, takes that, puts it into a product and sells on a license to their own customers. That then is the redistribution and that needs to be done in a way where the vendor complies with the open source licenses of the open source code, uh, which leads to so-called license compliance artifacts that I will look at in a second. This is the second of the two use cases, distribution, putting open source components into your product and passing it on to third parties. When you look at the licenses, there are 20 very common ones, 50 active ones, uh, some more retired ones, and then there are 3,000 to 5,000 variants of these licenses where developers have modified them in some way. The licenses are usually classified into three categories. Uh, there are the permissive licenses, like the MIT license, which do require legal notices, we'll come to that, but do not require, which is the most common worry, that you pass on any source code. Then there are the copyleft licenses, and they require, under certain circumstances, that you have to pass on your own source code that modifies or extends the open source software to a set third parties, your customers, either directly or when they come asking. So the second 
aspect of having to provide your source code. That is specifically the copyleft license obligation, which is so prominent in people's mind that it has led to its own category here, copyleft uh, licenses. But let's focus at the look at the permissive licenses first. They do not require you pass on any source code. They just require you perform certain steps, uh, uh, usually to create correct legal notices that you pass on with your product. Legal notices means that from the open source code, you take, for example, the copyright notices uh, and make them available to your customers. So you're basically crediting or attributing the original developers and giving them credit. They like that. So your product has to say, um, we include component X by developer so-and-so, it's their copyright. Also, license texts usually have to be passed on change notices and so forth. While that may sound benign, it is not in practice. Here you can see um, a CD or DVD uh, from maybe five years ago where Daimler provided buyers of its products, the third party, um, the information about the open source software that is part of the infotainment stack, part of the software <clears throat> that runs in the center console of their cars. See the inventory, the table of contents to the right, 1500 pages of legalese that nobody cares about except for those programmers whose name should be in there and make sure their name is in there. Because what can happen is that uh, some of those uh, open source programmers, by far not many, a small minority, but some of those are out for your money. Uh, these are the so-called copyright trolls. They participated in the development of open source components. And if they find those components um, in your products and you have not complied with the licenses, then they have a case against you. And these cases are often escalated in Germany because um, these, company, these, these uh, copyright trolls can get uh, uh, an injunction, can get um, um, uh, you to stop selling your product quickly based on how the German uh, courts work. So there's a whole process to how these copyright trolls work and they basically lure you into a trap um, after a first contact and then they will basically uh, try to shake you down. Not a lot of no is known publicly because whatever happens here usually settles out of court, but clearly you have to make sure that um, you do comply even with the benign requirement to give credit, create proper legal notices. And then there's the copyleft license obligation, which requires that, uh, again, not going into details here, depending on how your code is coupled with the open source code, but that possibly requires that you pass on your own source code to customers or provide it when they come asking. Uh, this is the so-called viral effect of the open source programmer to the left gives you source code under a copyleft license like the GPL2 or later version. You mix it with your own code. You can only legally uh, correctly distribute your code now under the GPL 2.0 or later license because that's a requirement of that license. You cannot put your own license onto it. So as a consequence, whatever you can sell to your customers, it's got to have that open source license, which implies that the source code is available and hence you must do so. Now, uh, unlike the copyright trolls, here is a different danger from a vendor's perspective. There are people who have organized themselves in the form of the Software Freedom Conservancy to who it is important that you comply with the license. These, are, these folks are not trying to shake you down or anything. They just simply want you to comply with the license and they have a case if you are not observing the obligations put on you by, say, copyleft license code. 
you should comply and they will try to enforce that. So they usually, because it's not about the money, it's about compliance with the licensees, uh, will look for special situations, pool their funds, and then, then sue a particular vendor, here in this case, VMware. So these are the dangers, arguably, um, that you need to find a way around, need to find a way to deal with, uh, so that you can get these fabulous benefits of using open source in your products. Here's a very short, simplified way of what capability you need in-house to deliver a product in a license compliant way. I'm making the assumption that if you do not want to make your source code available, then you have no copyleft licensed code. That's what you should do. But even if you only use permissive licenses, you still have to create those legal notices uh, called here license compliance artifacts. So it's a three step. Uh, and the first step, you need to understand what's in your source code base. When you do it for the first time, it will be a lot of work. You've got to review all your code. Uh, there are tools for that, but even with those tools, it will be a lot of work. So you create that inventory that in the case of uh, Daimler and the cars, for example, led to this 1500 pages uh, PDF. Uh, today, five years later, it's much bigger. So it's a lot of work. Once you know what's in your product in terms of software, once you have that so-called software bill of materials, you can then uh, look at the licenses, look at the obligations of the licenses of that code in the bill of materials and use the license to extract and construct the license compliance artifacts, the legal notices containing the copyrights, the license text and so forth. It should be still separate from taking this information and adding it to a product because it depends very much on how you deliver a product to your customers uh, in what it means to, in a license compliant way, deliver that. Your legal notices could be available through UI, could also be available on a DVD, or could just be printed during installation. That really depends on what makes sense in the context of your particular product and what the licenses say. So that requires certain capabilities that you need to build up just to start using open source legally correctly. Once you do that, you'll want to contribute, send back bug fixes, might even want to create and lead open source project, but that's for a later topic. All of this is usually given as a mandate inside companies who use open source components in their products inside companies to a staff function or an org unit called the open source program office and they get the mandate to define how to deal with open source define the policies also often to execute uh, these policies ensure these policies even though obviously they'll have to work with the development organization the strength of the open source program office is that any expert today will say you can deliver open source legally correctly. So it's just state of the art to do it properly, which makes it a responsibility of the CEO. It's their liability to ensure practices are in place inside the company that prevent lawsuits, that prevent loss of intellectual property. So you have a good case to argue we should have that open source program office now if you don't do already. Now, these uh, various aspects of how to deliver a product in a license compliant way, how to set up an open source program office, how to understand these complex legalese in the open source licenses, and perhaps most importantly, the tremendous work that it means to do that first inventory, create that first bill of material for one or all of your products. These services are available uh, through my company. So please don't be shy, be in touch. I'm happy to help. Good luck with getting started. If you haven't done so yet with open source, it will be very beneficial to your products if you do it right.